you might have heard it already before. 200 skydives before jumping a wingsuit. It sounds like a lot, but it goes by very quickly. You can do 200 skydives in just a few months, and the good news is that skydiving is even funner than it looks. This part of your progression is all about patience. Patience with yourself as you learn the ins and outs of DZ life and basic skydiving etiquette. Patience with the know-it-alls and the grumpy old tandem instructors who yell at you or offer unsolicited advice on the DZ. Keep your wings collapsed for the first 10,000 feet. And patience with the conditions, the rules, and all of the stuff that can sometimes feel like roadblocks. But remember, the rules are there only for one important reason, to make it slightly more difficult for you to injure or kill yourself. And it's hard to be patient in the beginning. That's why we're telling you this now, so you can go into it knowing that it's easier if you just sit back and enjoy the process of being a beginner. Skydivers can be a testy, hierarchical, and seemingly arrogant bunch. The people on the DZ with a thousand plus jumps see a huge number of tandem students, AFF students, and random faces come through their home DZ. While you feel special to you, to everyone else on the DZ, you're just one face in the crowd and it will be a while before you get to know the more experienced jumpers. Don't worry, the more you jump, the more you hang out, the more connections you'll make. Most skydivers don't care who you are, what you look like, or where you're from. They care if they can jump with you and have fun, if you're honest about your experience, and if you're genuinely keen to learn. You will make great friends here, but it may take a few hundred jumps. It's important to ask questions. Asking questions is admitting that you don't know something, and that's okay. It's much better to admit to everyone around you that you don't know something and avoid injury or death than it is to be too embarrassed or egotistical to ask the question in the first place. If you're going through AFF, ask your AFF instructor questions and ask them who else you should talk to. As a new skydiver on the drop zone, you're most likely to make friends with other relatively new jumpers. They are usually who you'll end up jumping with, but don't make the mistake of asking important questions to the 100 jump person who decides to take you under their wing. That 100 jump wonder loves to help, but doesn't know shit. Ask an AFF instructor, the SNTA, or the drop zone manager themselves. It has become increasingly easy to ask random strangers on the internet for their opinions, but we must stress that this is typically a bad idea. Ignoring the fact that you can't vet the person giving the information, the amount of miscommunication via an internet forum is hard to overstate. So what can you do to prepare yourself for wingsuiting? Yeah, just do 200 hop and pops. You'll be ready within a month. A hundred tracking jumps, bro. My biggest advice for somebody before they get into wingsuit and jumping, you just gotta get out there. You gotta fly your body. You gotta pretend you're an eagle. Spread your wings, let it rip. Okay, okay, well, they're actually all correct. And that's one of the reasons that 200 jumps is really the bare minimum. It should be your goal to be able to do any of those things by the time you start flying a wingsuit. Chaotic zoo dives with your friends can be fun, but if you want wingsuiting to come easier to you, spending some time really learning how to fly your body will pay dividends. Trust me, you don't want to be a one-trick pony in skydiving. It's way more fun to be able to get on any jump, and every part of skydiving is crazy fun once you get into it. The tunnel is a fantastic place to build body flight skills. Canopy flying is really critical, and every facet of freefall is awesome. We can't stress this enough, be able to get on any jump. Make friends in every discipline. 